Git counts 10 years under its belt, and Linux drives cars. Google renamed a file, and Ubuntu enables kernel live patching. One, 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 one. No, that's not the mark of the beast. No, it's not. It's going to be used for good. And someone has created a decentralized video hosting site that probably will not be used for good. Nay, probably for other more nefarious things. But don't let that get you down because this is another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about some of the neat things going on in the world of Penguin Land. I'm Ben Stone, joined each and every week by the man yeah. on the island. He's over there. He's one Pedro Mateus. Hello. With his uh, <laughs> multi, multi-faceted lighting situation at this time in the afternoon, because, yes. well, it goes from light to dark. And the person in the middle, you know her, you love her. That's Jill. <laughs> Hollywood Jill from Hello. L.A. Keeping it down, keeping us real, keeping us grounded. That's backwards, man. L.A. people should be all fancy and stuff. Oh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, what's going on? Well, I was talking in the uh, like pre-shows and before before we get started with this, I'm still a bit sideways because they gentrified my Aldi's and I'm still a bit miffed about this. <laughs> I, I don't know what to make of it. If you don't know what Aldi's is, look look it up and you're like, wait a minute, they they fancified that. And like, yeah, they did. Jill, well, hopefully, um, things are going <laughs> slightly less confusing in space, LA. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, actually, um, in, a, in a couple of weeks from now, uh, the Linux Chicks LA, we're getting ready to do a, another meetup where we're, we're doing a hands-on workshop, uh, teaching people how to install, um, make a web server with LAMP hmm. and on their, on their computers. And we've gotten lots of good response from it. I think we're going to have a lot of people there. So what are the, it's going to um, be good. Are you going to double down just with Apache or are you going to have some Nginx in there? Oh. Yeah, um, um, I got to talk to the other the other chicks about that. S. Michelle and chat as well, because I've I was thinking of, about Nginx as well. So Nginx uh, is legit. I was looking to set up our own video yeah. server, and you know, two decades of messing with Apache, walking into the never touching that, looking at it, it's like, oh wait, this is human readable. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's up, Pedro? Well, uh, I'm feeling a bit moist. Uh, it's been very warm today. Yes, I had to drop that. Sorry. <laughs> and you know I can retort yeah. to that. So, expletive delete you right here off the bat. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been very warm today and it's going to be even warmer uh, tomorrow uh, in the UK. So, yeah, it's it's nice to get away from, you know, the single digits into the almost 30 Celsius so yeah, that's it. Feels nice, but I'm a bit sweaty. Go figure. Mm. Uh, something yeah. to get hot and bothered about transition poorly done is uh, <laughs> get turning ten. Man, it's thing. It's real. Oh yes. Yeah. Talk about it, Jill. Yeah, get you okay. know or Jill. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, um, well, of course, Linus Torvald is one of the most influential people in oh. the world who transferred technology. He's great. Twice with I, Linux. Hey, man, I, I watch <laughs> I watch his videos on YouTube all the time, man. He was doing a thing about overclocking <laughs> yeah. with water there. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Not that Linus. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. no, this is the one that invented Linux and Git. And uh, GitHub is the social network where Git repositories and version controlled are stored and shared. And it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. It has transformed the world, really, <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for all development, all software development and open source in general. It's just, it's just transformed our universe. <laughs> I guess they yep. kind of had to They're dance around the March 2nd Unreal Engine 4 thing because it was like, hey, Unreal Engine went open source <laughs> and people jumped on us. They're like, no, that's, that's our <laughs> word. Don't use that. You know what it meant. What were you saying, Pete, baby? Yeah. No, it, uh, Git, uh, GitHub turned 10. And it's, uh, according to their, they have a little film that you can watch if you want. Uh, they say that they, over all this time, they have more than 80 million projects. That's about the same as the contrast ratio on my monitors. Uh, <laughs> the... Uh, the amount of pull requests crossed a hundred million that were merged into the uh, master project uh, somewhere in 2017. Um, 
2.9 trillion lines of code submitted in 2017 alone. That's that's a lot of code. Mm. Uh, there was also the fact that Microsoft, you know, we will talk about them more later on, but uh, they at some point decided, you know, Codeplex is a thing, but yeah, it gets more established and there's more people there, so we're just going to use that. And yeah, like Jill already mentioned, it's... Um, it's like a social network. If you mm. want to talk about coding environments and repo hosting and version control and whatnot, GitHub is just a default nowadays. And that's awesome to see. It's a thing to do. And one of my favorite mm -hmm. things is the some of the some people have very legitimate reasons not to use GitHub or get mm -hmm. for version control, but most of them don't. And I I do enjoy seeing the mental gymnastics employed sometimes to say no. Uh, SVN is SV better. It oh, runs oh. on Java. S <laughs> SVN you might might be able to leak, but it was like, no, CVS. <laughs> no, no, let it die. Let it die. Um, it's good to see, man. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that looking at the list, this is not going to make sense to the audio listeners. Doesn't under that, okay, this is what really sets it off. Directly under the <laughs> cup of Java, doesn't that look like an e-cig? I mean. Or a slim. <laughs> it, 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 that is a slim cigarette. It's. That's what it is. <laughs> Our, okay, man. I'm not saying. So uh, Vulture gives PDA some Linux lovin to make that. It looks like, walks like, quacks like, uh, Python is actually a penguin. What is this? Never heard of mm -hmm. it. Well, it's a, it's a PDA for all intents and purposes. It's a phone, a foldable phone uh, that has a... Well, I, I don't want to say full-size keyboard, but it has a keyboard to it, a little QWERTY keyboard that you can use to type. Oh, oh, oh you listen, read... you can name off an entire gang of features, but it looks like Knight Rider, dude. So it... Yes, it has the Knight Rider blinky LEDs when it has a notification. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things that uh, the register complained about, is that you can't customize how those LEDs behave. It's like, let's say you want the leftmost LED to say you missed a call, or the right post LED to say you have a tweet notification, something like that. You can't do that. All you have is the Knight Rider effect. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, they also complain about the um, the keyboard, you know, the big feature, the I big don't, thing. Listen, Brad, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at the key that keyboard does not look, what do you think, Joe? I don't think it looks 100% abysmal. It looks like you might be able to type on that. It has some travel to it. Yeah, actually, it it uh, looks just a little bit smaller than the the original seven hundred one EPC. But but actually, you know what was interesting is this was supposed to be a phone, mm -hmm. and um, I don't I don't for me personally I don't see being able to use it in in that way because it is exactly what you said it's more like a PDA or a Chromebook. <laughs> You gotta yeah. look at it. When was, the, yeah. when was the last time you used? To, okay, true story. I'm in on the <laughs> Google Voice Wi-Fi calling thing. They just—it's a mm -hmm. beta feature. You can sign up for it. You can almost. So I forgot to make all my tablets, my Nexus Sevens, my Nexus Tens, quit ringing. When was the last time your phone rang? Because I, I know <laughs> I, I made a very, very ungodly screeching noise the other day when one of my tablets rang, and I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> and so. Does it need to be a phone? That's what I'm asking you, Pedro. Does it need to? Really? It doesn't need to be a phone. In fact, uh, the fine folks at the register managed to get some Linux up and running on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it works for what it is. Uh, now, you know, if you really want to use it as a phone, I guess you could make like, oh, the, um, the BlackBerry comparison always comes up. But I don't think it really applies here. It'll probably have the same appeal if you want, like, the keyboard to do some typing, to do some work, as it were, in a phone form factor. But if the keyboard is as bad as the register claims that it is, yeah, people are not going to be happy about that. It, it might not mean... Okay, to further on this point, this point, <laughs> when was the last time you've held the phone up to your face organ as opposed to using your blue teeth? Uh, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're a snowflake anyway uh, i have an android flip phone <laughs> you see you yeah. have a you have a reason to break that out because you're a hipster and you want everyone to know that yeah you, you have a flip phone it's my english phone okay it's got an english sim in it that's where people over here call me too many jokes i'm not making anyway 
<laughs> this thing's 499 pounds. Uh, that's yeah. going to be tapping on the high side of 500 wet, stinky caches, American. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, good, good luck. W- wish them all the best. Um, but Android, Android, Lytics, Lytics, Fuchsia is no longer just color, is it, Jill? No. Uh, and it is not Linux, but is open source and uses a mix of software licenses, including BSD3, Claws, MIT, and Apache 2. All right. So and what is Fuchsia? Yeah. <laughs> it, it is. Um, Google is trying to move away from Android. And they're trying to unify all the things with with uh, between Chrome OS and Android. So they're saying that this is going to be their next OS. They're developing mm-hmm. for that purpose. So all right. this is the what I like to call. Um, it's not Java, the operating system. Uh, <laughs> Oracle, quit mm-hmm. suing us. Seriously, this is getting old. We'd like to spend money doing mm-hmm. other stuff. And... This is making a note. Hey, man, we got some notes on it. Uh, Pedro, what are our thoughts on this? It's uh, been in development for what? Like almost two years, man. Almost yeah, two that's years. Yeah. Almost two years uh, since they made the first official announcement. Have they done any preview and, releases? Like on? Uh, uh, I think you can get a preview, but if you still have to build it. Uh, mm-hmm. And there are a couple of devices which will run it, mostly the Nexus devices, obviously. But uh, this bit of news came about because Google renamed um, a file in their GitHub repository for uh, Fuchsia, which uh, was just called book.md, mm-hmm. and now they called it like the book or something along those lines, and people started paying attention to it. And it actually has a little bit of a description of Mm -hmm. everything that Fuchsia (laughs) is setting out to do. And I had to read through that, and it's like, oh, oh, so you're basically going the Apple tactic of throwing something in the ocean Mm -hmm. and seeing what floats. That's fair. Uh, Apple's done that very recently with the whole, yeah, we're dropping Intel and we're creating our own hardware. And they said that they're only going to yeah, be doing that. Yeah, but in, Apple's in also been, that's the fourth time Apple's done that. I mean, I, yes. I never <laughs> understood. And they, can you believe they're going to ARM? Absolutely, I can believe Apple's going to ARM. I mean, I... Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's uh, it's the whole announce it early so they can see, okay, people are sticking out and these points, let's try to get those solved before 2020, which is like sort of the date that they put out for dropping Intel entirely. Mm -hmm. So Google over here is trying the same thing. It's like, okay, let's make people aware that this is a thing. We want this to be a thing. And let's see how people react. What are the sticking points that people will have with this? So, hey, good on them. And if it is, you know, better than the glorified Java virtual machine that Android is nowadays, hey, Hey, man, grounds up. Yeah. Progress is progress. I say good yeah. on that. And hey, man, I saw some yeah. people, they were saying, oh, Google wants more control. Google's already got all the controls. Have you used Android without <laughs> G-apps? Yeah. You realize real quick that that is uh, no Moz. Ubuntu 18.04, it's going to make things easier. They're going to let you install kernel updates without rebooting. Is this something to get excited about? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you you no longer have to use the terminal to run live patching, but can do it directly through the software and updates utility, which you know I don't <laughs> ever use, but <laughs> but it is it is there, and so it's it's just a matter of signing on to your uh, your Ubuntu account, Ubuntu One account, and um, launching the utility. Hmm. And um, this is actually. Really, really cool that they've they're innovating in this area. Um, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise for the last uh, few years has been um, doing lots of innovation innovation and live kernel patching, and it's it's great now. Ubuntu is doing it and making it easier to install in the eighteen oh four LTS release. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm not yeah. against it. I'm not for it, mm-hmm. Pedro. What's our use case for live patching? Is do you, do you want to just live dangerously and wait for something to go wrong after you've patched it? Without <laughs> the hold your breath and see if it reboots and actually comes back up. 
Yeah, I think uh, uptime is the use case here. Say you have a server, say you have something mission critical that you want to be running all the time, but there was that kernel flaw that was discovered and people are kicking up a fuss about it and we need to fix it like right now. But we can't drop that over time because we're getting a lot of hits on our server. So live patch, hopefully. That that would require <laughs> someone using Ubuntu as a server, Pedro. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I mean, set OS is a thing. Just use that. Yeah. Uh, or Debian. Uh, but it's, uh, no, it's for the end user, from our perspective as end users, it's... I appreciate the reboot personally. It's, uh, oh, there's a kernel update. Let's reboot. Let's get all the new things. And if it breaks, it breaks. We know the kernel is to blame because that was the significant update that came down the pipe. Mm -hmm. So we just go back to the old version. Live Mm -hmm. patching is solely for those people who are worried about the uptime. Or you can make this, uh, you know, grandparent proof and just cut this on. This one less hassle you have to deal with unless it does, in fact, break something. There's a guy, yeah. this would be at uh, OMG, Ubuntu, all this business. It's going to be in our show notes. And they point out, you know, mm-hmm. just use the update utility. And it's there is a handy guide because it's Ubuntu and there's like mm-hmm. six of them that ship with Ubuntu. It's kind of confusing sometimes. Uh, NSS, TLS, that's a bunch of words, man. Do they rhyme with HTTPS or DNS? Yes, <laughs> yes, they do because of the TLS implications right there. So uh, as you may know, Sometimes you have that one uh, command line utility that requires a certain uh, domain name solving ability. Uh, most people just run that through curl, but that is being done uh, in a non-encrypted fashion. And it's just looking up the DNS server and it's, it's not encrypted. The connection to that DNS server is not encrypted. Well, this is here to try and fix that. Uh, if you have a CLI application that's run, uh, that's being built with an SSTLS, it, it will use... It uses Ninja. I don't like it already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it uses Ninja and it uses the Cloudflare 11111. Uh, that's one one too many. But uh, it's uh, it uses that to do the encrypted domain lookup because Cloudflare's system that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, it's fully encrypted DNS services for whoever wants them. And it's what this does. It implements that DNS lookup in the command line in an encrypted fashion. Security. Well, one, yeah. one of the things it kind of made mention <laughs> of was, hey, man, this thing could be really slow, so you probably want to do a local index. Mm-hmm. Just to yeah. save time. Yeah. And you you got to be like three black helicopter before. <laughs> I'm just saying from my own personal, ex- you know, not, not one black you helicopter. You have your anyway. own local DNS uh, <laughs> system going. Yeah. Which is next level. I totally respect it. Far too lazy to do it. Jill, you got some things about, uh, what do you got? Just- yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this can be used to block all those inaccurate Linux user surveys we talked about last week. <laughs> 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 Very good point. I used to, yeah, <laughs> I used a utility like this at one one point just to, to play around with, <laughs> and um, but I like that it's you know securing DNS. So that's that is really really awesome. Hmm. And um, right. it's you know as a lot of people people know that are that are watching this podcast, the domain name system or DNS is is the phone book for the internet. And it is very, very, very important. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, it's about time we've seen some level of encryption just yes. <laughs> with DNS as a whole. And yeah. uh, better sooner or later. I saw uh, one Mr. Tehan, he posted a thing in our Discord earlier today uh, before the show. Turns out it's like over 50% of the web is encrypted right now using uh Ah, just blanked. Open. Let's encrypt. Let's encrypt. Thank you. Let's encrypt. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, the more, the merrier. React OS, the thing you never hope you have to use, but if you do, you'll be glad it's there. Not point four point eight <laughs> is out. The React OS, React OS project. Please announce the release and continue working on release. Hey, every three months. If you don't know about this, you never heard of it. This is kind of like uh, Windows-ish, like XP-ish, 2000-ish kind of smashed together and you also get to use words like it kind of work ish, mm-hmm. but not, not completely. 
But um, I've always called this the air quotes, always worth a try operating system for anyone who needs to support old apps. And you kind of want to avoid dealing with Mm -hmm. Microsoft tax or having to worry about anything resembling security on an old XP machine. Uh, This latest update, it does bring a few things. The NT6 Plus software support and games. I'm not sure anyone's brave enough to try gaming on it. And it also brings (laughs) a new tool, Dr. Watson 32 alike. It's been made. uh, (laughs) One of the members, Mark, he added it. And anytime an application crashes, it'll give you a nice little log on the desktop that you can send off and be like, hey, man, this thing borked. And one last bit, NTFS driver. uh, That was coded by, who was it, Trevor during the GSOC 2016-17 area has been added. So... Yeah, I, I say good on them. There's some hardware support and some other stuff with the drivers. And again, I firmly believe this is something that you'd never want to use, mm-hmm. nor would I recommend yeah. using in production. But you might want to try it on the site, see if it works anyway. Yeah, it's yeah. not exactly what you'd mm-hmm. call usable, even at this point. Admittedly, they've <laughs> made leaps and bounds uh, since the last time I even Some programs work. We're, this is yes. handy when you have some weird, bizarre, proprietary thing. The mm-hmm. one reason you have a Windows machine anywhere. Yeah. And it's uh, they what the thing that they're doing is like the NT6 Plus uh, support. It basically means anything from Vista and 7... 8, 8. 8.1, 10, what have you, should, in theory, be supported at some point in the future once they can get it all up and running. Uh, the uh, You mentioned games earlier, Ven. Uh, they actually have uh, some success with older games, let's face it. Minesweeper, open... right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, yes. Uh, they're, uh, they're relying on open source graphics, completely open source graphics, trying to stay uh, as much away from the proprietary blobs that AMD has mm-hmm. in the kernel. Let's be honest, they do. Uh, and it's... They work. Uh, a lot of games actually do work, but they're mostly all older titles, as is to be expected. And they have uh, the system that creates a little lock file that Fed mentioned. It's really, really making progress. But again, I wouldn't call it usable right now. No one did, Pedro. No one did. <laughs> Jill, do you get any thoughts since allegations of this? Have you touched uh, React OS, or is it just something you've been intelligent enough to stay away from? It? Yeah. I kind of stay away from it, but years ago, you know, I played around with it. It is really nice that there's a independent OS out there that's that's trying to, you know, run Windows apps. Uh, it, 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 anytime uh, we can stay away from Windows is always a good thing. <laughs> so, but normally I just run, to, run Wine under Linux or a VM machine if I really mm-hmm. need to run software that run, doesn't run under Rhine. That's a, <laughs> hey, man. It, it, it's a good project. I've always dug it, and I've always, it's, it's never really worked the entirety of it, but I'm glad it's there one day. Yeah. One yeah. day. Uh, Pedro, they have found a way to annoy people on their GNOME desktop. <laughs> They're like, man, I'm, yes, I'm scared did. of KDE. I'm not going to install this KDE connecting. I'm safe over here on GNOME. They're like, ha, 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 no, you're not. No, you're not. And if you do, like, if you've ever tried KDE Connect and you really like it, but you just can't stand the KDE uh, desktop environment, well, that's a bit of a, pal- uh, not palindrome, mm-hmm. uh, tautology. Um, it's, uh, well, now you can get that KDE Connect functionality on your GNOME desktop with a little GNOME extension. Uh, it's available. You could just install it the same way you would any um, other no mix engines uh gs connect is what they call them and it's well it gives you almost the exact same functionality you can get the notifications from your android device on your uh desktop you can browse your uh android device from your pc which is like the big one right now for uh kde connect uh you still need the kde connect app on your android but the kde connect app on your android doesn't download the entire kitchen sink uh, from KDE, mm-hmm. and well, now you don't have to on your GNOME uh, powered Linux either. So that's good. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, man. it's it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome to be yeah. able to browse and send files wire- wirelessly from your Android phone mm-hmm. to your GNOME Linux desktop, and you can use the Nautilus file browser or Google Chrome and Firefox. And I thought yes. that was actually pretty cool. So. Um, 
that to me, I actually might use this. <laughs> and the clipboard <laughs> sync works, which is good. Yes. Unlike these two heathens, these psychopaths, I, I come to a desktop to escape push notifications. <laughs> yes. So, no, I'm not going to ever even entertain the possibility of having notifications here as well. <laughs> there is one Aww. bit of functionality from KDE Connect that I will never get used to, but I love, mm -hmm. which is if you're watching something on a supported video player, usually a native video player like VLC and whatnot, and all of a sudden it freezes and you go, oh crap, what happened? And then your phone starts ringing. Oh, that was KDE Connect <laughs> pausing my video so I could answer the phone call. And the moment you tap the button to uh, kill the phone call, the video resumes. Well, I'll be damned. Mm. <laughs> We're living you know, in the future. <laughs> that, that would be a very impressive feature in like, 2005. Um, coming up next, video is better when the codec and transport work together. Salsify is a new design for real-time internet video that jointly controls a video codec and a network transport protocol. I mean, this is WebRTC, VPA, all the good stuff strapped together coming from Stanford University. Uh, mm -hmm. They basically just thrown out a research paper. They give you mm -hmm. the data and they're going to show you how this thing deals with limited bandwidth and holds up comparatively with, you know, your standard uh, VB8 WebRTC implementations. And it does a very good WebRTC. Chrome 65 is a comparison we are seeing in their video and it is maintaining fluid movement where well they're i'm is it salsify sal, I'm, I'm calling it salsify i'm calling it yeah. salsify, salsify man this thing needs chips <laughs> is what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> this is neat now the one thing i did notice there's no audio codec attached to this this has been thrown out yes. as a babe into the wild and you guys get on it, everyone adopt it, and do the thing. It's not so much the video codec technology itself, it's how the network, it's the bits tying the clients together and how it deals with adaptive bandwidth, um, just conditions is a very simple way to put this, and getting all the packets from point A to point Q. Pretty neat. Do you think, well, is this battery technology, is this something we'll see in 10 years? <laughs> I definitely yep. think it, it, it will be because um, it, it's, uh, as you said earlier, it improves the speed and quality of streaming video, which results in fewer drop frames and less packet loss. And um, the fact that it's combining the two technologies together, it's, it's almost like it's a, a bare metal approach to using software, mm -hmm. bringing uh, several different, different types of software together um, um, to, you know, to make it uh, just just more efficient and um, more more bare bones. And um, as far as the audio goes, uh, VP8 ha you know, can be multiplexed into the Matroska-based container format WebM, mm -hmm. which um, mm -hmm. and Vorbis, which is, uses uh, Opus Audio. And yeah, there is no mention of audio in in um, Salsify, even in, in the the paper they wrote which I was a little surprised yeah. about. <laughs> in the FAQ, they so, actually say yeah. it does not support audio right now. This is all yeah. about the video. Yeah. And uh, if you're, you, you don't want to read the whole paper and you want to read the whole thing, they made a little graph, which uh, has like the vertical uh, axis is about video quality and the uh, horizontal axis is about video delay on the 95th percentile in milliseconds. So you can see like the worst 5% uh, frames uh, and how delayed they were. In Salsify, they were like yeah, somewhere between 500 and 300 uh, milliseconds. Skype, on the other hand, which was like the second best, uh, has really yeah. poor video quality and it's over 500 milliseconds. Then you have yeah. FaceTime, then Hangouts, then WebRTC with VP9, and then at the very, very end of the scale with over five seconds of video delay, you have a lot of WebRTC. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, well, that's significant. I, I mean, <laughs> you could see like Sildats or Netflix, is going to, a lot of people are going to jump on this to see how they can yeah. Borg it. I mean, that that's what they're going to be looking at yeah. right now. It's like, mm -hmm. can we implement this in some way, shape, form, or fashion? It's completely free to do so. It's not like they have to be bad. Uh, so I don't think you know, we'll never see a, unless somebody 
is going to be tying this stuff together, a small open source project. You know, we're not going to see not Skype.com and whatever, mm-hmm. and this is just going to work. And because we very much have a situation, it's like you can have one of the two out of the three choices. It's like, do you want low latency and good yeah. video? Uh, okay, well, your audio is going to be crap. Uh, do, do you want, <laughs> uh, you know, good audio and uh, good video? Yeah, latency is going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. And we've run the game. Low latency audio, poor video. It's, uh, yeah, it's. The thing here is, this is being developed by researchers at Stanford University, like we already mentioned. It's it's no uh, no surprise, uh, or it will be no surprise, that we see the usual suspects like Microsoft, Apple, Netflix, Google, mm-hmm. uh, trying to implement this at some point. But it's good to know that the technology that's running the back end doesn't have their particular brand of proprietariness yeah. attached to it. So that's good. It's good to see exactly. Microsoft like completely released this Silk Kodak. Jill, quit attacking that microphone. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. All right. Coming up next, take back control of your videos, a decentralized video hosting network based on free and Libre software. We're talking about PeerTube, not RedTube, not BlueTube, not GreenTube, not YouTube. Uh, this is the mastodon of video is probably the best way I could put it. I don't know, Pedro, you had some thoughts on it. Yeah, it's, uh, this is never a bad idea, you know? When you go into, oh, decentralized something means that there are several instances, you can have tons of hosting for a fraction of the cost that you would get otherwise. It's a really good idea. But the thing about youtube and people wanting to get out of youtube right now is the monetization issues and the, uh, specifically the demonetization issues that again have been i think happening. in all fairness to point out the average person don't care about anything pedro just said they watch yes. their cat videos they're done <laughs> yes but those are the watchers we're talking about the people who upload the videos who would like an alternative to youtube as it were and let's say this again, catches on i don't think this platform is meant for those people could be, could very well be, yeah. but let's say that this manages to reach that mainstream Let's talk about attention. This place that only exists in Pedro's head. I love this. It's <laughs> yes, it's called speculation. Join me on this, will you? Uh, <laughs> Go, girlfriend. <laughs> so you let's say this achieves any type of mainstream appeal. People actually start using this. You start to get the exact same content that you do on YouTube. And someone's going to go, wait, I'm not making any money out of this. There's no ads. There's no nothing. So let's try to implement a way to monetize this. That, in my opinion, is the way that this will become, you know, the true uh, alternative to face, uh, not Facebook, but YouTube. Facebook, you can make the argument. Uh, but it's... Um, that is when the bad ideas start to come. And how are you going to curb those bad ideas when you have an entirely decentralized platform? One of the biggest problems I see with decentralized uh, platforms is humanity itself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> then again, one of the things I'm always worried about when I see decentralized platforms, especially this one right here, is like this is going to be adopted by some sketchy non-scrupulous, I mean, just some bad people. I could see this going in a very, very bad way. But decentralized anything, I mean, it only works if it's wicked transparent. The end user can't know that it's centralized, decentralized, made of moon. They they don't need to know that. It's all just got to work TM in the background because when presented with choice, you look at humanity. If humanity, we, we don't admit it to ourselves, but we crave, crave curation, or just a single point of failure. We want the one thing we can change and to blame we or want to move the away from. Goat. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Correct yeah. Mundo. And you look at things like Mastodon. Great technology, but it doesn't have okay, can I go to just this one place and do this thing and then everyone's there? It's like, well, no, you gotta do this and this and this, which ultimately is great. Spoiled for choice is a real thing. And ease of use is takes all. Takes all. If, it, if this can be transparent, mm-hmm. if this can be easy to use, technology is sound. I understand it. I get it. It could work. But right now, gotta wait and see. Gotta wait and see. Yeah. Jill, what do you think? Yeah. Um, this is uh, just, it's another web torrent client, really. So, um, and, and very Mastodon like. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't really see it <laughs> taking off either. So, um, it, it, you know, Mastodon is awesome, and it has its, you know, core group of users. But it's, it's only grown to a certain point, and I just, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, that's it, I, probably I think... <laughs> exactly what will happen with yeah. this, because let's face it, uh, <laughs> all that overlong bit of speculation that I did earlier will only ever yes. be a thing assuming this gets any sort of traction which it yeah, probably won't exactly. because mastodon didn't <laughs> hmm. yeah okay I, I think it's a perfect time for carnology because <laughs> linux is under your hood yo well it was uh no, it's kind of not when you think automotive linux you tend to go linux i thought that was qnx a lot of people think um this is on ZDNet. I just love throwing in ZDNet articles because look at it. It's causing all the video, video inputs to go haywire. <laughs> the web page jerks around. It is a horrible product. But they do talk about a Canonical, the product VP, um, well, then Canonical product VP. Now it works for a Google Cloud product manager. Kind of lays down to ZDNet uh, just how Linux is making inroads into it. And it turns out Tesla's, of all things, used mm -hmm. to run Kombuntu, and I thought it was kind of fun to see that uh, Tesla's like, yeah, we're going to we're, we're gonna do our own thing now. Uh, we're going to add enough of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that seems to be that <laughs> way, the way that most big companies go. You remember, you know, us being Linux Gamecast. Nope. Uh, we have, yeah, it's not this show, mm -hmm. but, you know, we have a lot of uh, gaming spiels, and well, you saw that Valve when they first decided to bring SteamOS to life and uh, make something out of it, it's going to be based on Ubuntu. And then Canonical started to brag about it and started to make some questionable decisions, and Valve went, you know what, it's going to be based on Debian. How's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it, we're seeing <laughs> some of that here, too. Uh, it's people moving into the automotive grade Linux uh, as a more AGL, uh, man. You know, white brand. AGL is a good thing, though. I mean, it's yeah. uh, people coming together. They uh, What is it? Unified code base. UCB is at 4 point not currently. And, you know, I, I think it's good. That yeah. it, I don't know if Linux is anywhere near ready. They did mention that Tesla finally upgraded from 2.2 kernel to 2.4. Hmm. <laughs> They're running 2.4 now. <laughs> Science. And the article does point out that um, several years back, it was like seven years, Microsoft, of all people, did a automotive initiative with whatever. we. Uh, I think it was like internally called, we can't believe we tricked manufacturers into running Windows on our automotive. Yeah. yeah. And it was... Ford. It was... It was Ford, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ford gobbled that up, yeah. played with it for a hot second, and said, oh, oh man, somebody's getting fired. Uh, <laughs> so that was the thing. Uh, yeah. gonna, uh, I remember seeing the uh, Windows, <laughs> uh, when I still use Windows, uh, when whenever I ran a Java update, I would see in the installer, it's like, oh, uh, Java runs in your car. Nowadays, that thought just fills <laughs> me with dread. And knowing that, most of it is actually going into Linux. Good. It's good. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, at least we don't have to worry about uh, Microsoft's blue screen of death in our you know, mission yeah. critical dri no. driving a car. Well, we just got to worry about uh, the complete lack of security built into most of these modules and their ability to communicate each with each other and also having Wi-Fi and uh, 4G connectivity that allows anyone to yeah. lock down your system. That's what we need to yes. worry about. But um, yeah. on our new segment, I like to call Microsoft Loves Linux. Um, <laughs> Microsoft Windows 10 gains Linux, WSL console copy and paste functionality. As of Windows 10 Insider Build 17.643 rolls off your tongue, you can copy and paste text from and to Linux WSL into consoles, to which I retorted just manic cackling laughter followed by more manic cackling laughter than... <laughs> Maybe a, seriously, this wasn't a thing. Wow. Yeah. More and more, I genuinely find myself seeing, now it's good that innovation's coming along. I mean, if any Linux inroads into Windows and vice versa, maybe a little less on the vice versa part, is a good thing. But I saw, when I see things like this, I, I genuinely go, 
How was that not built in from Genesis? I mean, this is Apple. Yeah. This is Apple iPhone one level, no copy paste, man. Mm-hmm. I know. <laughs> it's uh, at this point, uh, my uh, experience with the Windows subsystem for Linux is very limited. I have a Windows 10 VM that I use every now and then. At work, we're mostly still stuck on Windows 7. So, uh, yeah, very limited experience. But how was this not a thing? Mm-hmm. I One can just yeah. imagine, though, somebody stuck at work and the first like, you don't understand, man. This, is, this has been um, godsend to actually have this. As opposed, you know, they're stuck on Windows. And they're very, very happy right now. And we're glad you're very, very happy right now because I can put myself in that spot and going, why is this not a thing to, this is finally a thing. (laughs) I mean, it's done and it's done logically control shift V control Mm -hmm. shift V, which, you know, most terminals, Mm -hmm. virtual terminals, that's what you're using. Also control shift T for new tabs, (laughs) tab terminals make the world a better they help the world rock and world go around man it's not the other thing it's tab terminals i'm telling you right now um microsoft is abs- abs- um, yeah, azure Gipsy? i don't know it's too much microsoft i'm poisoned a little bit jill <laughs> tell me about it <laughs> okay well this is uh um microsoft trying to get into the internet of things space and yes they've been trying to do this uh for a while and uh um uh, they they first did it with Windows 10 IoT Core for the Raspberry Pi, but <laughs> that didn't lead to much adoption, as we know. And um, and at many of the conventions I've been going to recently, including Scale and the OSS Summit, uh, Microsoft employees have been doing a lot of talks about installing and using Azure on the Raspberry and other embedded devices for various projects. And um, this is kind of Microsoft trying to say viable in the Internet of Things space and continue to use their name recognition. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's to me, another example that Linux has won the war. And Microsoft is scrambling to do whatever it takes to stay relevant in this space and unleash the penguins. Uh, Microsoft can't penetrate or change the GNU because it is protected. Microsoft and I've stated is that before. But. Contributed, contributed <laughs> yeah. gigs of code. I'm not gonna, no one's going to say, hey, yes. we'll have to stick up for Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft is changing as a company. And I'll bring this up every single week. Is they're, they're getting out of the operating system business. They realize that's going away. Cloud computing, it's going to be a thing. It's going to be mobile. You can carry it around. The fact, the idea of a desktop computer, those days are numbered. I mean, I know yeah. three of us would sit here and go, Vin, what are you talking about? Crazy talk, crazy talk, but it's reality. Most people's personal computers, they carry it around with them every single day. Yeah. Believe it or not, even Microsoft gets this. That's how far down the track this thing is going. And they're, they're just opening up, man. They want to get, they want you to use Microsoft something with well, Azure or anything of the likes. Now, Windows embedded, we're not going to be seeing that, Jill. I don't think so. <laughs> no, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. It's 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 all going to be Linux now. <laughs> their own their own uh, versions of Linux and the Azure yeah, Sphere OS. Earlier, they had Debian Jill, based. You, yeah, uh, you mentioned yeah. the uh, Microsoft uh, name recognition. When it comes to Microsoft yeah. name recognition on ARM based devices and Internet of Things and embedded devices. Mm-hmm. The only thing that comes into my head is Windows RT and how that failed miserably. Yeah. Well, you got Windows <laughs> RT. Yes, so true. Back, <laughs> if you want to have sympathy for somebody, especially with, you know, hey, Microsoft is like, we need Linux to use Linux as a tool for to sell what? Services. Support. They understand yeah. that. If you want to have sympathy for somebody, imagine being one of the Microsoft sales weasels. I mean, salespeople that have spent the last 10 years years the last decade telling your big clients fortune 500 plus companies <laughs> linux is the devil bobby boucher and it will eat your face mm-hmm. now you got to walk into that same company to those same people going linux is the best thing on the world we're using we linux use as a critical linux. part yeah. Yeah. of <laughs> yes so exactly yeah that that doesn't <laughs> sound fun at all yeah um, the days of balmer are mm-hmm. long gone no, no, not yeah. really. They're, they're, I think there's no. uh, they're, they're still they're a still in 30% court. Yeah. chance of <laughs> random Bulmer-like behavior from Microsoft. 
which is unfortunate. But one thing that is uh, not unfortunate, it's quite fortunate, is the beautiful people who make this show possible. That's loud, live, commercial free. That's what you bring in. And we are online four days a week, bringing you a lot of madness. Pedro does his show on Tuesday. Jordan does one on Thursday. I do the FUBAR every Friday. And that's made possible by you. If you want to kick us a few quid uh, shekels, maybe four quarters a week, that'd be great. You can get your name and lights at the end of the show. It's terrifying. We get Amazon affiliate links. We even have a Libra pay. I threw up there after like six months of having the account and I finally <laughs> remembered. Amazon affiliate links, Newegg, Humble, everyone shopping through those affiliate links. That's awesome. That is adding up magic internet money. Make it rain. We can convert that to new stuff, new gear, mm-hmm. new games. And uh, that's pretty much it. But we do need to think. Lovely, mm-hmm. lovely people. Um, we are just shy because... Uh, you're looking at a patron goal right here right here that's jill jill don't come cheap man i was like hey jill what about 225 and just like get out of my house and it was like okay we're about 250 and it's like all right it worked out we're at 249 right now if you've been thinking about like it's right there hang on hang on oh no we've done it we've summoned the shilling penguin who's not lined up correctly uh Making it rain all of there. But thank you so much for doing this. We have fun doing this, and we do our big show Saturday. It kind of got the party started, and we want to continue bringing you our special brand of nonsense. But we do want to thank Massivoni, who increased their pledge to 250 So there, if you don't know about it, uh, we totally hide from you the rest of the week. We're all hanging out in Discord, and this is kind of oh, like yes. our little club. But you're more than welcome to join he did hit the death note level, which gives him access to the show notes. And you can kind Yay. of, you can kind of bend our <laughs> ear during the week and suggest new things like that. And we do want to thank Arthurin because I got this thing. <laughs> this thing showed up in the mail. <laughs> Yay. You're like, wait a minute, Ben, you're full of lies. I, you, you've had a mic arm. Yeah, but this mic arm does this. Yeah, that's awesome. Pile. It stays level. Yes. It, well, it, it leans out and in, mm-hmm. which is Oh, right. Yeah, I should. Uh, I just like, hey, Jordan, I, we were talking in the pre pre super shows, and that's another thing you get. I'm trying to show good uh, is access <laughs> to our production meeting every week. It was like 60 extra hours of content you've never heard. Uh, I showed Jordan, and I was like, hey, Jordan, check this out. All I did was this. And he's like, ooh, because it's not that fixed point. But Arthurian wrote us <laughs> a little thing that comes with things off of our Amazon wish so, and he says, enjoy your new mic arm. Now with the 90% less squeak, squeak, damn it. You cheaped out, Arthur, and I wanted the one with 100%. Let the train wreck continue. Thank you so much. Uh, Yay, Arthur. And he caused you physical yeah. pain, didn't he? Oh. Yeah, and, 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 and Arthur, and thank you for bruising Ben's butt. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You know, I'm kidding. I, I, I spent the last three days trying, try, trying to get past the trauma. And you guys are just bringing it back up. Man. I mean pretty miserable it's pretty dark it's, that's evil man yeah arthur was able to reach out and attack assault me from croatia i believe <laughs> i opened yeah, no, the box it's uh okay i'll tell it's the story great. pedro will tell the story never mind go ahead <laughs> no it's great you're able to cause ven physical pain it's just amazing <laughs> i just opened the box man and i took out the arm and I was, I was down here and all the things and the stuff and i was like hey man where'd the uh big heavy weight that when you drill the hole in the desk and drop it in and it goes boom boom it's like ow it wasn't painful it wasn't as I, was, I mean it stung i was like ooh, all right picked it up went about didn't let anything like that got in the shower the next morning the entire top of my foot's like blue Aww. and so i had to go youtube the smurf song so i could go la 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 and all that business hey man let's have a slice by get out of here um yeah. coming up mm-hmm. first this week this is where we talk about uh basically anything that's tiny and electrified no not hamsters uh google introduces a raspberry pi and a dyi smart f- speaker kit uh, this update kits are rolling out to tarjay jill tarjay oh oh that to me that was the big story the real story here is that raspberry pi is coming to target <laughs> yay <laughs> <laughs> that's just it's just so awesome that it has penetrated the mainstream at that level it's just very 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 exciting and but, it, yeah. but this is a really neat, really neat kit um um so you can make a smart speaker or smart camera 
uh, for the the Google Cloud Internet of Things. And um, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm digging this. Uh, this yeah. is kind of a la the Nintendo cardboard thing for the Switch, but for smart people. Uh, <laughs> because you can end up yeah. with an actual useful <laughs> device when you get done yeah. with this and possibly learn something. And it's probably cheaper than just the genuine block of cardboard Nintendo has tricked people into buying. Yes. Yeah. Mind you, I respect that because it's evil. So this, <laughs> hey man, I don't know. This is going to replace like Heath kits. I mean, stuff like this. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly. uh, we've actually talked about the smart speakers and uh, Google's efforts to make uh, smart speakers really easy. If you're trying to build your own and you don't want to buy the Google, whatever it's called, the home assistant whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you can basically make your own. And if you don't want to use Google system, well, it's a Raspberry Pi. You can run anything you want on it. And that's great. That's actually really awesome to see. That's great. And, you know, Chip's mm -hmm. got to point out. It's like, yeah, once you start, it's getting that spark. And if it's that something that you mm -hmm. dig and you want to do something, then you come up with your own idea of a project. You can go down these massive rabbit holes and yes. learn all this extra stuff that you come out the end with a deep knowledge. And I think that's great. And I think it is very important. Stuff like this is going to be on the shelves at a target. Yes. Because <laughs> then it's in the realm of, Oh, little Billy likes tearing apart, whatever. Maybe I'll buy him one of these and check that out yeah. or Susie or whatever. I mean, nobody jump on me with like, Whatever you know, kids. <laughs> Little kids. Billy is a the uh, <laughs> proxy for kids. Your filthy kids stink who are into... larva. That's uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's thing. If man. this was Saturday night, I'd mm. call them something else, but it's not. So yeah. Hey, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I was building Raspberry Pi projects b before they were a segment on a show, Pedro. Mm hmm. So yep. <laughs> uh, let's say you would like to have your own open source, completely open source photographic camera that does, you know, pictures and it does uh, the Polaroid thing. Hang on, where hang it on. Prints I, I, out I just got to tap in for a minute. The photographic camera <laughs> as opposed to what? <laughs> what, what, what would you call a video it? camera? Uh, uh, also, can you bring down the volume on the video a bit? That's uh, just getting. Messing with my brain a little bit. Make, make it louder? Uh, okay, so, I got it. No, no. <laughs> but, yeah. 200% incoming. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this insane person uh, who you see their hands on the video right there uh, decided it was a good idea to have a thermal printer built into a Polaroid um, case with a Raspberry Pi as its brains and the Raspberry Pi camera as you know, the actual uh, camera that takes the pictures. And I'm going to say to the... allegedly, because at no point have I seen this thing actually print. <laughs> it looks like he printed something and shoved it in it. it... Yeah. Is it actually working here? Yeah. Or... yeah. Mm -hmm. There yeah. it goes. Ugh. All right. There you go. <laughs> uh, and he, it actually works. And when you look at it, if you go through the whole article and you look at the pictures, you can see, oh, it's just a regular Polaroid camera that he starts to take apart. He still, uh, starts to pull things out. He actually goes in and cuts off uh, a chip, uh, like the entire segment around a specific chip on the original uh, Polaroid PCB and wires that into the Raspberry Pi Zero and then and this is the big kicker because here at Linux Weekly Wednesdays we have the TSA acceptance factor uh, mm. scale <laughs> and this one passes with like hipster colors Dude. It's, oh you have a Polaroid camera okay alright <laughs> that's what it looks like it's perfect <laughs> I'll tell you see this is a, this, you want to might mm -hmm. throw an asterisk at the end of this because this is a stealth TSA 10 plus because yeah. if a TSA agent sees somebody with a Polaroid camera in 2018, they know that person's already an insufferable expletive deleted. <laughs> Which want, is why they don't want to deal with them. Don't so want to deal go, with yeah, them. Yeah, go like, ahead. Just, just let this person go, through. Go, I do go. not. I don't want to. Yeah. I do not want to hear what level vegan they are, nor about their crossfit. <laughs> so just 
It's genius. <laughs> it's really, really genius. It's, and uh, he yeah. did have one issue, which was the uh, RS-32 COM port for, you know, plugging other stuff in. He had to make it stick out the top where the flash would be. Mm -hmm. uh, but he managed to make it go down far enough that he could keep the flap to keep it covered. Hmm. Nailed it. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Uh, hey, we're about to bounce out of here, but I'm sure we got something wrong. Maybe we got something right. Maybe you have some questions for us. That would be strange. Uh, you can do that. Just head over to lamescheemecast.com. Tap on that contact button. This is the best way to do it, people. I will say this ad nauseum because we all get the emails. We're able to share them around. And it just works like that. Prove you smarter than bot. Pedro likes to say that. Pretty simple captcha. Mm -hmm. I have faith that you can do it. You can leave us a YouTube comment. Not 100% guaranteed on that. If you want, just like, hey, I'm going to write something and I want a response. If you're a patron, you can do that. At reply me in Discord or just post it right there on the Patreon. We'll get back to you. Uh, split lickety, as as the kids say. I don't know. Maybe that was backwards. Um, coming up first, what do we have? We have Mukrim, and he's asking about speed. Can you guys ask... Why the NVIDIA, I'm guessing he meant answer. Why the NVIDIA PPA is so slow. Uh, is it hosted on a budget DSL? By the way, the latest beta drivers fixed my blink blink. Keep on keeping on. I like that. I like keep, uh, keep on yeah. keeping on. Yeah. <laughs> Hail Santa. Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so why is the uh, NVIDIA graphics drivers PPA so slow? Ubuntu is in charge of it. That's... Ubuntu developer canonical people that yeah it is slow yeah like pain you okay I don't have the fastest connection however mm -hmm. I have connection capable of hitting 800 plus megabits mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I expect things to download reasonably fast you know <laughs> Uh, not not this PPA. I, I can wipe out an entire system update by the time. Because what is it, Pedro? About 70, 72 megabytes for a driver plus yeah. the NVIDIA settings, maybe a mm -hmm. Lib Vulcan. So we're doing the driver update. itself is like 60 and the other 15-ish mm -hmm. are just all the bits that attach to the driver. Right. And I know when I, you know when you hit that NVIDIA, because it's like, boom. Boop. Boop. <laughs> yeah, no, it's yeah. great. My internet speed is nowhere near as fast as Venn's, but it's like, yeah, I could usually get four and a half megs of download per second, actual megabytes per second. And the moment I hit the graphics drivers PPA, <laughs> it's like 80 kilobytes per second. Kilobytes. Kilobytes per <laughs> second. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, man. <laughs> it is genuinely over a minute because I know I can go make a cup of arch tea. <laughs> <laughs> when I have a, I, I'm not kidding. It, it works in my head. It's like, oh man, you got time to go like make, make a drink mm -hmm. if you're doing a graphics update. And uh, maybe they want to fix that. Uh, I'm glad it fixed some blinking issues. They're still there. Uh, the Chrome issue is still there. That's been sent upstream to Chrome. They're like, oh, this is a problem, which I'm sure and probably rightfully so. The Google's going to be like, that's not our problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, over here, they finally released the uh, 39048 drivers for 1604. It's in the PPA now. Mm -hmm. I haven't installed them yet. That's what I'm going to be doing after the show. I didn't want to, you know, uh, test fate by installing that today. What Pedro is trying yeah. to see is he's on uh, 1604 LTS and will yes. probably not be on two shows. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this, I hope it won't be that bad. One show minimum. Um, there's a reason. Trust me, I got a lot of flack. They're like, I can't believe you're running 1710. Vin. Like, dude, I'm just try, yeah. tr trying to shorten the nightmare that is going to be, because I, I went from LTS to LTS last time. That yeah. wasn't fun. Uh, it's, yeah. That's my excuse to move to Solus. Okay. <laughs> and just as long as the check clears, right? <laughs> there was no check unfortunately uh -huh. uh, Mr. Good Cat writes in and screams in her face he's like yo man please tell me there's a simple to understand firewall program for penguin powered operating systems Google has let me down and IP tables is not designed for humans 
You know what? You know what? I'll give you a 50-50 on that last one. Not, not in total agreement. Uh, I, I, I have my solution. You two go. And I'll... Well, uh, my solution is, yes, if you're just using IP tables from the command line, it's going to take some learning of the syntax, but there is a teeny tiny GUI that Fedora includes by default, whatever you just do, the uh, default install, Firewall D. Just use Firewall D. Firewall D, does this require installing Fedora? No. Okay. You can install it on whichever distro you're running. Fedora is one of the distros that includes it by default, mm -hmm. which is kind of how I learned about it because I used Fedora for a while. And yeah, Firewall D, it's it's still a bit uh, not user-friendly, but everything is very well sorted and you pick like a specific uh, area of the network you want to set each and every single port forwarding to and everything else. So it's well organized. It's still hard, but it's well organized. Hmm. Jill? Yeah. Yeah, and I've only I've only used um IP tables. Um <laughs> mostly, but uh several years ago I used to use a Wi Fi radar, which had had a utility for a firewall in it that was GUI. And it was really simple to use. And um I haven't played around with the newest version, but it is still it is still being um actively uh, updated. Hmm. Mm -hmm. My turn? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, this is coming from me. This is like, I think it was Atomic was asking, he's like, how do I uh, CPU throttle under BSD with an Intel processor? It was like, take off the heatsink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the business of getting ass done, man. <laughs> All right. mm -hmm. I, I like, I'm, I'm results oriented. Uh, so my solution for a GUI uh, under Linux, I don't, did he say GUI? Uh, he didn't say GUI, he's just saying GUI. a firewall that's not IP tables. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you one that almost will certainly have a reasonably decent GUI. It's called router, Brad. <laughs> yeah, yes, WRT or OpenWRT. Right. <laughs> if, yes. if you want yeah. to standardize on user interfaces, just get one that supports uh, DDWRT, OpenWRT, tomato, if that's still around. Uh, <laughs> seriously, get a router. There, like you can, you can get a router that can route, bro. Says mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, that will support DDWRT for like fifty wet stink, thirty if you shop mm -hmm. around. And yeah, there's really not an excuse not to have one. Plus, you want yeah. Um, <laughs> then I'm not saying don't mess around with IP tables. If you want to get fancy, if you want to learn about networking. Mm -hmm. Play around with IP yeah. tables. If you yeah. want to sleep at night, trust me, the NSA, CIA, all the alphabet agencies, they can get in anyway. Just give that one up. Uh, just, yeah, it's a good router. Set it, forget it, have fun with it, because no, no one really cares what you're up to. So, mm -hmm. um, everything I said is probably not right. Looking forward to the email next week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to do it for this uh, show. I've been Vince Stone. That's been Pedro Matez. That's been one Jill Bryant. And we'll be back next okay. week for some of this uh, crazy, crazy uh, train of happiness and fun. And I'm just killing time till I can find that credits button. Boom. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Yay. There it is. <laughs> 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 All of our beautiful party patrons, starting with our executive producers, getting listed oh, yes. against their yes. will. I'm like, haha, we're going to plug you anyway. I want to thank everyone for that. Uh, good show, tight show. Oh, anybody want to guess how long it was? Who wants to guess how long it was? Uh, uh, an hour? I want to say 5348. Uh, <laughs> no. Nope. Uh, uh, 49. 50. <laughs> 49, 50. Oh, look at this optimist. <laughs> yeah, no, that's kind of getting a little, uh, teeny tiny, a little bit low. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm only, I'm, listen, I'm just throwing this in. One hour, four minutes. Bye bye. <laughs>